What you looking at? God, he's worried. He's worried because he's sending people like me. Uh, my name is Big Alasez. I'm the co-founder of the Mongo Nation. If you ever see the patch, they made the patch after me. The second patch. I met this guy and his sister was with an older convict, a real convict, and you know, he gave us the game and he gave us the guns and you know, we'd divide the money. We'd go in, he'd wait outside and we'd go in. And once they turned around, you pull the gun and you and they would see that it's caught. You take them in the back, tie them up, go, and one guy would be on the register and the other guy be tying them up in the back like that, we take the money, and if you wanted cigarettes or whatever, you get them on the way out. The older guy was in the car waiting for us. He was teaching us the game of armed robbery at 15. Somebody pulls a knife, and then somebody gets stabbed. You know, as time goes on, then people started getting guns, and they started shooting. You know, and then, I mean, they went through that era where they would uh, do that drive-by shooting. You know, they had all those automatics until word came down from the prisons. You know, no more drive-bys because innocent people were getting killed. What the prison says, it's, it's mostly the law because if you go against them, then all the gangs go against you and they'll come for you. In the street gang, all the guys that were that were in my uh, little section, or most of them are in jail or dead. I got hit three times. I went back and they didn't let me stay the full time. They sent me home, they said I was nuts. So when I came home, you know, I, I was, my wife was already with another man. My son was being raised by my mother-in-law. My mom and dad didn't want me. They said I was nuts. So I figured, what am I going to do to get money? Right away, I thought, well, I'll go to school, get some money, right? And then start dealing, do something, rob somebody. So I went to school. I ended up closing the school. You know, I ended up closing the school. I ended up opening a free college. On Saturdays, I ended up helping the Brown Berets open up a free clinic. You know, I was with them when they took a town. I marched them into the town up north. You know, I, I mean, they would say, we're gonna do something. I did it. When the police set me up to kill me, one of the Brown Berets was a cop, and he picked us up, me and a friend of mine, and he had guns in the car. And I was laughing, looking, so what are you going to do with these guns, dummy? He goes, no, uh, we're going to go to Safeway, and I want you to shoot out the windows. And I started laughing. I said, what? And it was at night. So I said, you know what? Went and bought some milk, emptied it, filled it up with gas, put a rag in it, went to Safeway. I threw the bottle on the window, blew up, boom, ran, left. They caught me a few blocks away, and beat me up, put me in jail. But the cop told me we were going to kill him. So if I would have shot that gun, they would have killed me and said, he was shooting at us. That cop set me up. You know, he was a hero and all that because he set up a lot of people. The grand jury had just indicted me. And um, they were looking for me again. I had got out of bail. They were looking for me. And these guys were getting together. They were going to join a club. So one day they asked me, they said, why don't you come with us, Al? 
meet these guys because I was in pretty good shape. So I said, yeah, let's go, man. I didn't want to go because they were looking for me. But I went. And when we went there, this guy made a racist remark. And I told my friend, you know what, man? We ain't going to join it. And they went and sent for this big old guy. I beat this guy before he got off his bike. He didn't have a chance. And then after he went in, them guys said, oh, we're, you know, we're going to give you our patch. So you guys said, we don't want it. We're going to start our own club. And that's what we did. You know, and the reason they got the name Mongols, it's because they had conquered the known parts of the world at one time. So in black and white is because of the sheriff's cars. Black and white. And we used to fight with them all the time. And that's how we started in 69. I had just come home, I was nuts. I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't, the sad part, I didn't know I was nuts. But everybody else did. I used to wear a chain around my waist. A primary chain, it's a motorcycle chain. And it had a big buckle. And then I just got it and started hitting him in the face. I took half of his face off. You'd say, hey man, let's rob that guy. I'd rob him. Let's beat him up. I'd beat him. Let's stab him. I'd stab him. I would, we're going to do this over here. Let's do it. When in East LA, when we were marching the first time down Whittier Boulevard, and we went to the park, they have a park there, Laguna Park. All the police were there. And I was carrying a sign with a two by four. I took that sign off and started fighting the police with a two by four. Well, a cop that was a highway patrol that knew me came, parked his bike right there, came when I was fighting. He goes, man, they're going to kill you, Al. Run. So I got to the other side, I got away. I remember one time this guy owed money and we went in his house in Vegas and had two guys with me. And uh, they, I was talking to him kind of like in his bedroom, door was open and you could see the two guys sitting on the couch and he had this jewelry box full of gold and, and diamonds. And he owed a lot of money. And I looked and he had it open and he reached over and closed it it towards him and I started laughing I said do you think I came for that bullshit I said brother you're gonna pay now or when you come back and he said come back where am I going to the hospital because those guys are gonna help me we're gonna beat you and if anybody comes we're gonna beat them too and let them know why they're getting beat because you owe money the money he owed he went and bought himself a new Mercedes his sister brought it. I told my friend, take it. And I stayed there till this guy, I, I stayed there till they left. And I told him, did you call the cops? I said, you might get me. You might get the guy driving. But we'll be back. We'll be back. I had made a, a, an agreement with the devil a long time ago until Jesus Christ broke that curse. All those people we hurt, they're never gonna forgive me unless they become real Christians. But I know one thing, God has forgiven me. Yesterday I did about 15 baptisms. You know, I, I've traveled all over the United States I used to go into all the prisons. I've been to death row in Texas. I've been to India. Not because I'm cute. Not because I'm smart, because nobody's ever said I was smart. But because of my Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, has given me a platform of forgiveness. And that's, that's what it is. You got to forgive. Alcohol was legal. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's sociable. Now weed. You smoke weed someplace and 
pills are legal. All you gotta do is pay five dollars, ten dollars, get some kind of rat insurance, and you can get as high as you want for free. Higher than the law allows. I was a heroin addict for 35 years. 35 years. And I tried everything. You know, methadone, pills, psychiatrist, prison, and nothing could help me until I accepted the Lord. When I was in Vietnam, you know, I, I used to walk the point. That's a man in front of me. And you know, I, when I would shoot them, I would get them and I'd cut their ears off and put them in my pocket. That's somebody who's serving the devil. Believe me. What man is going to go around cutting people's ears off? You know, that's where he had me. And wherever he has you right now, if the devil's bothering you, I'm here. You know, I'm not a good preacher. I'm not a good teacher. But my gift from God is prayer. And it wasn't for Jesus Christ. I wouldn't have nothing. Nothing. I was just a thug, an idiot. You know, go do this. I did things. What a difference to what I was, what God has made me. What a difference.